abstention. The result of the voting is as follows. 14 votes in favor, zero vote against, one abstention. The draft resolution has been adopted as resolution 2728. Tonight we're outside the Centenary Club in Weymouth. Tonight the candidate who was recently selected supposedly um, will be doing a Q&A with the local Labour Party. Um, as far as I've heard, and I've come from outside of Weymouth, um, this candidate was imposed. There was no selection as such. That would normally happen, but I think this um, candidate here was put on a short list of one and, and there was another candidate living locally who was the candidate last time who would like to have stood but uh, they were told that that is not an option. So I don't know what the local Labour Party think about that but there's a Q&A tonight. Hopefully some people will talk about the process and, and why there was no democracy. Lloyd Hatton, the prospective MP, is doing a question and answer session and we have a question for Lloyd Hatton and all Labour Party members about why they're still not supporting an unconditional ceasefire. The conditions that people are experiencing in Gaza are absolutely obscene, despicable and atrocious. When you hear stories of families being blasted, children without parents, parents without children, people having limbs amputated by, by medical uh, professionals, without anaesthetic, people starving, people dying of dehydration. A siege is appropriate, cutting off power, cutting off water. Well, I think that Israel does have that right. This is completely and utterly obscene. Thousands and thousands of people have died, over 30,000, 70 percent of them women and children, and the problem now is that there is starvation facing the entire population of Gaza, two million people. And we need the so-called civilised West to stand up and say no, no more, it has to stop. And then you, when you consider that our government is sending weapons to Israel in order that they can carry on their disgusting no, slaughter. It is vile, it is horrendous, and it has to stop. We want them to commit to not sending arms to, to Israel. And I think this is even more important now because the United Nations meeting has actually, uh, by and large, voted that there should be an immediate ceasefire. And even the British government, the Tory government, has voted for this. Even the, even the USA has abstained. So if Keir Starmer and the Labour Party can't take a position of an unconditional ceasefire, I think it's a really shocking state of affairs. And we will lobby and push any politician that we can to get the UK government to demand a long-term, completely sustainable and permanent ceasefire, to stop weapons being sent to Israel completely and utterly, to let aid in immediately and to stop those atrocious settlements expanding in the West Bank. So we've been quite disturbed in the last few days to hear people like Gerard Kushner, the son-in-law of President Trump, talking about turning Gaza into a place where they can rebuild and offer up luxury apartments to people who want to live on the seafront in Gaza. The thing that, um, that I would try to do if I was Israel right now is I would just uh, bulldoze something in the Negev. I would try to move people in there. In Gaza's waterfront property, it could be uh, very valuable. It's a little bit of an unfortunate situation there, but I think from Israel's perspective, I would do my best to move the people out. That means displacing the people who live there who are refugees anyway. 70% of the population of Gaza are Palestinians who have already been moved out of parts of Israel or from the West Bank or wherever, so they're going to be made refugees again, stuck in the desert in tents. That's the, that's the proposal anyway. So we need to challenge people like Jared Kushner and any property developers who think that they're going to take advantage of the plight of the Palestinian people. Thousands, thousands and thousands of them are now starving. Some of them are within a week of dying of starvation. And um, we're glad today that there was the the, the ceasefire vote of the UN and we hope this will become a permanent ceasefire and that uh, they will seriously look now at a two-state solution. Free, free Palestine.
So let me be clear about what I was saying and what I wasn't saying. I was saying Israel had the right to self-defense. And when I said that right, it was that right to self-defense. I was not saying that Israel had the right to cut off water, food, fuel, or medicines. A siege is appropriate? Cutting off power, cutting off water? Well, I think that Israel does have that right